attention to Herman Weil. Uh, now it attributes to Andre Vey uh, with a pointer to an interview and to Maurice Klein. And uh, I'm not sure, I don't want to, uh, to decide who said it first, but it certainly captures um, what I want to say. So I'll begin with a theorem. It's not a theorem of mine, and I'm sure you will not disagree. Uh, let's start with a chessboard. OK. And uh, if we place a bishop on the black corner and let the bishop move any number of uh, legal moves, uh, it will terminate on the black square. So no number of uh, legal bishop moves will get uh, the bishop from a black square to a white square, no matter how, how long you wait. That is, uh, even if we do a number of moves that's larger than the number of elementary particles in the universe, we believe it will still be uh, on a black square at the end of uh, the sequence of moves. Uh, if somebody came and gave us uh, a very long computer file with a sequence of, moon, of moves terminating on white, we would say you have a, a problem somewhere. And we'd go one by one and see uh, that at some point an illegal move was made. Now, the silly way to prove the theorem is to uh, launch a computer program <coughs> that would, would list one by one all sequences of, uh, of moves and will send us an SMS when it finds uh, a sequence of moves that uh, terminated on the white square. Now, the risk of this is we'll have to wait forever, or at some finite uh, point, we will get uh, an SMS telling us that uh, something is wrong. OK, actually, it could save quite a bit on that because the chessboard is finite. And we could prove by induction using uh, our usual techniques that uh, any number of moves doesn't do that. The same would work for an infinite board. Let's take a one-dimensional board and do it with two-dimensional or three-dimensional. And suppose the legal move here is a jump to the right or to the left by an even number of steps. Now, what I want to clarify is that the consistency of formal theories is very much the same as what we've been doing here. So what we're going to do in this talk, we'll take the quote so, and formalize it logically. So God exists will be phi 1. And mathematics is consistent will be phi 2. And devil exists, I think, is phi 3. You cannot prove it will be phi 4. Now I have claimed no knowledge of either the god or the devil. I'm totally ignorant of them, perhaps equally ignorant. Phi 4 was done by Gettle. So we're left with just mathematics is consistent. And I hope to convince you that mathematics is consistent. Now, we will start with a 50% discount on that. And I'll just prove to you that PA, the axiom of arithmetic, is consistent. OK, so uh, what is the formal system? We have a language. Uh, which is the, an alphabet, a collection of symbols. And we have finest strings of symbols, like this one. So this is a finite string of symbols. Why don't we throw in this, this, and x? So this finite string of symbols is not uh, a formula. Some strings of symbols are formula. I'm not going to give you a, a definition, but I'll give an example. For all x exist y such that y is satisfies this relation with x, and for all z, for all w, if f of x of z w is y, then either z is y or w is y. Properly interpreted, that says that there are infinitely many primes if you interpret the order relation is less than on the natural numbers, and f is the, uh, the product. OK, but this is a, a, formal, a formally syntactically correct 
uh, formula. I, of course, I'd eliminate, I omitted some of the parentheses. There should be many more, but you get the idea. So some strings are formula. You should think of those as, say, uh, coordinates on some infinite dimensional chess board. Uh, more complicated formula are made from simpler ones by joining them with connectives, with quantifiers. And whenever you have formula phi, there is another formula called the negation of phi. So, uh, and there is the double negation of phi and the triple negation of phi and so on. Uh, we should think of all these as, say, some uh, squares in, in some infinite chessboard. And we are allowed to make uh, certain moves on this board. These are called uh, derivation rules. Uh, for instance, uh, if we uh, um, believe or agree that uh, uh, phi implies psi, this formula is marked as correct, and phi is marked as correct, we can get uh, psi. This is called the modus ponens rule. This is one of many rules. Uh, in fact, you're, you can be satisfied with just this rule. Now, the game of formal proof is you mark um, some subset of uh, formulas, and you're allowed to move from them to others, say by this rule or by other logical rules. Now, <coughs> which formulas are we allowed to, to mark? We're allowed to mark uh, a decidable subset of the logical validities. These are the formulas that are true under any interpretation. The set itself is not uh, decidable, but it is generated by uh, a subset that is decidable. And the game is, suppose we decide that uh, phi is correct, we adopt this as an axiom, we adopt somewhere there another one as an axiom, and we can move from these two to another one. And we go on, and formal consistency means that we will never mark uh, two neighboring squares. We will never arrive at the formula and its negation by this formal game of uh, uh, of formal proofs by uh, valid moves <coughs> in the logical calculus. Okay, so can we do it or not? Let me point what happens if we do manage to mark two consecutive squares on this hypothetical chessboard. If you reach a formula and its negation, then by using this, which is a logically valid formula. We can always mark any formula of that, uh, of that sort. Phi implies that not phi implies psi. By two detachments, we can get to any psi. So if we hit one uh, contradiction, we can fill the whole board. We can prove everything. So consistency of a formal system means there is at least one square that you don't reach. There is at least one formula which you cannot prove. Now, an example of uh, a set of axioms we can start with. For example, we can start with the group axiom. These are just three or four. I don't know how many. Associative binary operation and, and another one uh, which is the inverse. And there is a unit and, and so on. If we mark the group axiom on this board in a language that just contains two operation symbols, and we mark the logical axiom, can we reach a contradiction? No, we can't. And we don't have to wait infinitely long to do that. We can prove that in ordinary arithmetic with the following very simple trick. We take a finite object that's codable by a single natural number, say, S3, the group of three, all the six permutations of three elements. And we interpret each formula in the language of group theory uh, in that particular structure. Some formula will have truth value T. Some will have truth value false. All the logical axiom have truth value T. Uh, all the group axiom have proof, uh, truth value T. 
And our detachment rule preserves that. So since there are statements in S3 which are not truth value t, we cannot prove them. For instance, we cannot prove uh, from the axioms of groups that for all x, for all y, x, y equals y, x. Now this proof was done in arithmetic. By induction on the length of formula, you, we gave an invariant, a truth value in a finite structure. Now you could wonder, how can I talk about S3 inside arithmetic? Well, I can by coding finite sequences and so on using uh, the basic theorem of arithmetic. OK, so now comes the next challenge. Let's write down the axioms for piano arithmetic and try and prove. So this is for proof from a set of axioms. We proved from piano arithmetic that group theory is consistent. In fact, we proved that uh, you cannot prove the statement every group is a billion. You cannot prove also the statement every sufficiently large group is a billion. You could produce other models. Can we prove in piano arithmetic, that is just by using induction, that piano arithmetic itself is consistent? Can we find some invariant about formulas in the language of number theory and prove, using that or some other trick, that uh, we cannot reach contradictions from the piano axiom? The piano, the piano axiom just say that there is a success, successor operation which is objective uh, and uh, it has uh, the induction scheme, that is, for every property you can write. If it's, sat it's satisfied by zero and preserved under successor, it, is, it holds for everything. OK. So you cannot do that. You cannot do that by Gettle's theorem, second theorem, except in one case. Now, which is that case? The what? <laughs> yeah, well, if PA is not consistent, then we can prove anything. We can prove that PA is consistent and that PA is not consistent and that every finite group is a billion and that every finite group is not a billion. So there is just one case in which PA can prove its consistency and this is exactly the case in which it is not consistent. So Gödel's theorem uh, to the uh, Platonist means PA is consistent and cannot prove its consistency. Gettle was very careful in phrasing it. Gettle really proved that. He said in PA, you prove that if PA is consistent, then not provable the consistency of PA. OK, this is what Gettle proved, that if it is consistent, it cannot prove its own consistency. Now, so this is a micro, a caricature of what we're doing in mathematics. No matter what we're talking about, uh, a billion varieties, infinite cardinals, uh, Rn, we're employing the same set of logical axioms and some other general uh, principles to, that help us to take uh, Cartesian products of objects, to take the group of all homomorphisms from one group to another and so on. We all speak that language. The only thing that differs is what uh, axiom we start with. Now, in ordinary mathematics, unlike in PA itself, so PA itself, piano arithmetic itself, cannot prove its own consistency. To show that induction does not lead to a contradiction, you need, you cannot do it just by using induction. But you can do it by in ordinary mathematics. OK. PA cannot provide a structure that will satisfy PA because an injective function cannot be, yeah, a successor operation which is injective cannot hold in a finite structure. But here's another theorem. If there is an infinite set, 
then there is a structure that satisfies satisfies PA and that's therefore a PA is consistent if a set of axiom is uh, satisfiable in some structure it has to be consistent because in a structure you cannot have a sentence that's both true and false right so if you believe in the existence of infinite sets you, ha you believe in the consistency of PA. Cons consistency of PA follows from uh, the existence of an infinite set. This is actually from very little. If, if there is an infinite set, then there is a, an infinite von Neumann ordinal. This is probably the 1920s. If there is a, an infinite ordinal, there is a minimal infinite ordinal because the, the ordinals are well ordered and the smallest infinite ordi ordinal uh, can be interpreted to satisfy the axioms of PA. Uh, this is old, old stuff. So do we believe the consistency of PA? We do, uh, unless we reject uh, infinite sets. And in this context, Gettle's second incompleteness theorem can be just interpreted as there are no discounts. We could solve the chessboard consistency or um, group theory consistency in the stupid way by waiting forever for, con for consistency to show up, but we replace that by a finite argument, a finite evidence, which we call proof, proof by induction, that group theory is consistent. The bad news is that PA in itself cannot do it by anything less than waiting forever. But if you wait forever, take your forever, whatever that is, which is, I hope, infinite, and make from it a model for PA, and the, you prove consistency uh, in your lifetime without waiting forever. So, uh, okay, so <laughs> I don't think anybody seriously doubts uh, the consistency of piano arithmetic. If you seriously doubt the consistency of PN arithmetic, uh, it would be only fair if you never used in your work any infinite sets. I mean, you could do a nice career in mathematics just doing proofs by induction. The consistency of PA will not be one of your proofs, but there are many other things you can do. But if you want to talk about real numbers, complex numbers, or do anything more than that, then you cannot accept uh, that PA is inconsistent. Now, what about uh, ZFC? Well, I don't think personally that ZFC itself uh, will ever be uh, shown to be inconsistent, although, of course, we cannot prove that ZFC is consistent in ZFC. But we could prove that ZFC is consistent in stronger theories, uh, where you have super infinite sets called inaccessible cardinals. If you're a Platonist and you believe in the meaningful existence of a collection of all sets, then you believe that ZFC is consistent. You believe that. Uh, but the point is, Gödel's incompleteness theorem just means you have to wait. So my suggestion is uh, let your computer software run and let it have send you an SMS when it finds the contradiction and before that happens let's let's not worry about it okay 